dirty pour on these counters, so they're perfectly level. All the edges have been routed. You can see this is the way you want to build counters if you're building them. There's two layers of MDF, and then it's trimmed out with some more MDF. All the, all the, the gaps are all filled with like an all-purpose Bondo. The edges are all rounded, so if you're building a counter from scratch, this is the way you want to build them. And if you're, if you're installing counters in a room like this, this is also the way you want to set up the stations because you can coat it and just slide it right over to where it goes. This goes over to that wall. And this one goes over here against this wall. There's plastic all over it. Notice there's no carpet, tile, or anything else in here. This is really the proper way to have counters set up if you're doing it in a new construction project or in a remodel project. So enjoy the video. Hey guys, so we're going to be doing a dirty pour on these, but with a twist. So first step, we're going to do our clear epoxy, just a thin layer, kind of like we teach when we're doing the dirty pours on the counters. So I'm going to go around and just pour a bead down the middle on all these. And I don't want to drip all over the floor, so. We're doing a clear because we got black primer. So once this epoxy hits that, it basically looks like black epoxy. So there's no point in pigmenting this. So I'm trying to get these beads, once they level out, about the same thickness everywhere. And then we're just gonna cross roll this bead and spread it out. And I'm using a, a foam roller because I don't want to get any roller hairs in it. So since we're not gonna be blending colors or anything, I'm just gonna use a foam roller. I want to get as close to my edge without really pushing that tape off and applying a lot of pressure to that. So I'm just kind of using this like a squeegee. Okay guys, so we're gonna do the dirty pour, but I wanna get my, my dirty pour to be really wide, so we're gonna use this dust pan. We've cut it so it's nice and flat, and I'm gonna pour my epoxy on here and let it drip off. And I'm gonna do one vein down the middle, do one down the middle there, and then we'll come back and we'll start filling in everywhere else.
All right, so now that I've got the majority of the our, our top covered, I'm gonna get a, a smaller, just flat trowel, and I'm gonna start filling in spots and kind of being more precise with, with the dirty pour. Finish the dirty pour. Counters look absolutely amazing. That's a 12 foot section. Here's a smaller one. started leaking probably didn't push the tape down tight enough so some of it's already kind of leaked out as you can tell but we're gonna pull the rest of this off and then make sure you get these little anything strips of tape left over before that epoxy runs onto it Pull the tape, you want to wait about five, maybe even ten minutes and let, let that resin start to flow over before we start brushing it in. That way we can have some product to work with. The other option is just using some, you know, that have got on your plastic. We always want to start with some resin on our brush. And all we're gonna do is just make sure everything's got a layer of epoxy on it so we don't have any missed spots. And that's gonna allow that top to flow right over your edge and bring the design on the top to your faces.
take it to another level. We're gonna actually do a layered epoxy with some more dirty pour veins through it to add a lot more creativity to this countertop. So we're gonna do a similar process. We've sanded it, we have did our barriers for the edges, and then we're gonna do our flood coat and clear, and then we're just gonna add our dirty pour veins randomly throughout the counter, and then spray some of our liquid diamonds for a dispersing effect. So we're gonna add the clear right now. And I wanna make sure I get an even amount on all these counters before I run out. So I'm not gonna necessarily pour it all out. So what I'm looking for is trying to get all these beads to lay out about the same thickness. So anywhere it's thin, I'll just come and add some more product. of losing some fibers from our roller into the, the flood coat. You can also use a squeegee. And then we're just gonna cross roll this until we get the whole counter coated. So we'll get the majority spread out. And then we'll start running it to our edges. Making sure we get all the way to the edge. applying pressure and using it kind of like a squeegee and just pushing that product around. keep this, these black fracture veins that we added to it the first layer. So I'm gonna take a smaller uh, trowel, pour it out of there, and just go around these black veins.
What an incredible video you guys just watched. If you want your projects to look the best, then you need to use the best. And with Ligari products, that's exactly what you're gonna get. There's no torching to get rid of bubbles and only a seven day full cure time as opposed to 30. And remember to visit our online store at Ligari.com to get your kit today or just a single item. And remember, Ligari.com has you covered.